Take a look at this guys, it's the new car from a new brand that has just been launched here in Malaysia. It's the JQ J7. This is supposed to be a premium SUV sold at a relatively affordable price. And as you can clearly see, there's a bit of style going on here as well. Let's take a closer look. First things first, I'm sure not many of you would have even heard of the name Jayku to begin with. That's not surprising because it is brand spanking new, having first been introduced just last year in 2023. Now, Jayku, the name is basically a combination of two words. A German word, Jäger, meaning hunter. You may be familiar with this name in Pacific Rim movies. And the second part is basically cool. The name literally means cool hunter. Together with Omoda, Omoda and JQ forms a sub-brand under Cherry International and it's claimed to be the fastest growing brand in the entire world. But while this is clearly a Chinese brand, the JQ name itself does not exist back in China. This is a brand that's specifically designed for export markets and Malaysia is one of the first markets in the entire world to get it. And in fact, Jayco has got big ambitious plans for our country. Right from launch, it already has its own assembly plant right here in Shah Alam and it's exclusive to the Jayco brand. In fact, the facility will also house Cherry's R&D center for all right-hand drive markets. That is significant. When a new brand comes into Malaysia, they will usually get a local partner to start with. But here, Jayco is already starting off with its own assembly plant. That is impressive. And this J7 is just the first of a range of Jayco models that are coming to Malaysia. After this, we'll get the bigger J8 SUV. And right after that, we're gonna get the smaller J6 electric SUV. So as you can tell, they're all SUVs and that's exactly what JQ specializes in. Now, a lot of things have been said about how this car sort of looks like a Land Rover Range Rover. And while personally, I don't see the visual connection, on a technical level, there is actually a relationship between Cherry, the parent company, and Land Rover. Cherry has been Land Rover's local partner in China for the longest time, assembling Range Rovers for the local market. Over the years, there has been some level of technology transfer between the two brands. On to looks, while I won't say that this looks anything like a Range Rover, I think it's unique all on its own. It's certainly blocky and stocky enough, but with more than enough design touches to make it look contemporary and modern. It's a really stylish looking SUV as a whole. This split top LED DRL and bottom headlights has been almost overplayed in the industry recently, but I think it works way better here than in most other cars. I also like the big 19-inch alloys with the dual-tone finish and the contrasting red brake calipers underneath, but the Cooper tyres I'm less of a fan of. From the side here, you can really see it looks far more serious than a typical soft roader. You've got big and chunky wheel arches, squared off side mirror housings, and a really well-designed two-tone look overall. One thing taken straight off the Range Rover are these nice flush pop-out door handles. But you know what? It actually works way better, smoother, and quieter over here than on actual Range Rovers. Overall, I guess if you squint really, really hard, you can say it looks sort of like a Range Rover Vela. But I really don't think the J7 needs to ride on looking like a Range Rover at all because overall, I think it looks really handsome and stylish all on its own. This is easily one of the most original, the most confident designs we've seen coming from China yet. It's got a lot of interesting features as well. The rear wipers are neatly hidden behind the top spoiler over here. The full-width LED taillights are done in a very subtle way to look less generic than usual. And overall, I can say it's such a good-looking car. But one thing I have to say though, those fake exhaust pipes, they are not on at all. Moving on inside, it becomes a little bit more generic in here compared to the super distinctive exterior, especially with this large vertical screen in the middle and a predominantly horizontal layout. But having said that, there are still quite a few interesting design touches in here. 
first and foremost you've got these vertical aircon vents at the corners it sort of looks like what you see in a volvo car and then you've also got this nice pattern in the middle over here that breaks up the monotony of the largely black cabin and then you've got these metallic bits with exposed rivets on the door cards clearly designed after the land rover defender even the seats that you see up front here are clearly made to look like those on range rovers even down to the wide headrests Quality for the most part is very very good, the entire top part of the dashboard, all the door cards and even the centre portion are all nice and soft to the touch, fairly premium. But as you start moving down the cabin, you will find a few cheaper bits and pieces. This centre console over here in particular, yeah, it doesn't feel as solid as it should. But you can say the same things about properly premium models like the Mercedes-Benz GLA and the BMW X1 as well. What's more unique on the J7 is the small little slot that you can put in facial tissues that can come in handy, I suppose. And then you've also got this big rotary dial for you to choose driving modes. Now this car comes with a whole lot of driving modes including mud, snow and off-road. Although this being a Chinese car, every time you change modes, you get this. DCL mode. Sport mode. Snow mode. Mud mode. Sand mode. Yeah, I don't really like that at all. Beyond that is this really cool looking gear selector sort of designed to look somewhat like a jet fighter controller. I think that's pretty cool. And of course, this big 15 inch vertical screen. This big screen is one of the better ones in the industry today. And of course, it works with wireless Apple CarPlay connection. Plus, being a big screen also allows it to have a proper vertical layout for Apple CarPlay. I think this works really, really well with a big map display at the top close to where you'll be looking at. Audio quality though isn't that great. You do get an 8-speaker Sony sound system but it just sounds about okay, not premium if you ask me. Other than that, this car also has a wireless charger for your smartphones but it also comes with a small little air vent to cool down your phone so it doesn't overheat. Other cool features include a really nice ambient lighting system in the cabin and a proper color HUD. Other premium car features include an air purification system and an air quality indicator. This can be really handy for one of our hazy seasons. Even as it is right now in Putrajaya, the air quality isn't very good. You've also got seat ventilation for the front two passengers, plus a really cool feature for the aircon where every time you park up and lock the car, it will turn on the aircon for quite a fair bit to clean the cabin. So every time you come back into the car, it's all nice and fresh. Plus, you've also got proper double glazing windows for the front doors. Now, this is a feature that's usually fitted only on the highest end of vehicles. Back here is actually very very good as well, there's plenty of legroom and headroom. For your reference, I am 167cm tall, but clearly there's enough space even if you're much much taller than I am. More than space, the seat itself is really nice as well. The backrest is very nicely angled, very comfortable, and the base is nice and long, a proper size for adults in the back here. Other than that, you've got all the nice things that I mentioned in front that are still intact back here as well. The top of the door card is still nice and soft. You've got all these pattern with ambient lighting as well. Plus, this metallic looking grab handle is really stylish. There's also this big panoramic sunroof up top which makes it look nice and airy. Plus, every time you lock the car, the sunshade closes itself automatically so you don't get extra heat coming into the cabin. One thing I don't like though is that it only has a single aircon vent in the back here so only one passenger can get cooled down at a time. That is just weird. Opening up the boot with a powered tailgate of course and it's not exactly great. The load height is actually quite high meaning you have to lift your things up before putting them in. That's because they fitted a full size spare tire under the floor which I guess is a good enough trade-off. As for the load bay itself, it's again not very big, it's just over 400 litres but of course you can always fold the rear seats down for an even bigger load bay. 
at the other end of the SUV is a 1.6 litre four cylinder turbocharged engine, here making 197 PS and 290 Newton meters of torque. Just a few years ago, those numbers would be enough for a hot hatch Golf GTI. Here in Malaysia, you get a choice between front wheel drive and all wheel drive. If it's me, I'll happily take the front wheel drive version, but with this car being heavily marketed as an off road kind of SUV, you may want to consider the all wheel drive. As for the all-important pricing, the JQ J7 starts from just 139,000 ringgit for the front-wheel drive, going up to 149,000 for the all-wheel drive version. That's about a full 100,000 ringgit less than proper premium SUVs, and in fact, it's still cheaper than a Mazda CX-5. Lastly, on to safety, the J7 is pretty much fully decked out. It gets seven airbags as standard, including a center airbag between the two front seats and a full suite of ADAS features. This includes AEB or Autonomous Emergency Braking, ACC, Adaptive Cruise Control, Active Lane Keep Assist for a full level two semi-autonomous driving, Blind Spot Monitor, Rear Cross Traffic Alert, so on and so forth. And if you really see this car as a proper premium SUV, you also have to remember that the Mercedes-Benz GLA and the BMW X1 here in Malaysia are missing all these crucial features. They are not available on the GLA at all, while you have to pay extra for it with the X1, like a subscription service. With the JQ, it is a much, much better value buy in terms of safety. But of course, that is an entirely unrealistic comparison because I don't think many people at all will be cross-shopping between a JQ and a Mercedes-Benz or a BMW. To me, for a brand to be properly premium, it needs most of all heritage and pedigree. Obviously, JQ being brand new, it doesn't have any of those things just yet. Given time, it may well be perceived as a premium brand, but for now, calling it so is a little bit premature. But right now, with the J7 being well-priced as it is, with its unique looks, with its high-quality cabin and technology levels as well, overall, I still think this is an extremely compelling package in its own right. So, over to you guys. What do you think of the J7 as an SUV or JQ as a brand? Would you consider buying this car over similarly-priced competition in the market or even properly premium cars in the upper segment? Do let me know in the comments comment section below. For now, thank you for watching everyone and stay safe.